samples would be in the form of these products. So again, I know this is hard. So, so let's do one last example and, and hopefully this it should eventually start to make sense. So we know this reaction will react. So when this reaction reacts, once it reaches equilibrium, will the vast majority of the molecules be in the form of these products or in the form of these reactants? Well, first thing you do is you look at these conjugate bases and you analyze which conjugate base is more stable. So how can you determine which conjugate base is more stable? Well, you have to imagine they're analogous conjugate acids. So again, this is the real molecule we're dealing with, but we know it dissociates forming the, this, this product. So again, we don't know a lot of information about this guy. However, we do know a lot of information about ammonium. So again, this is the conjugate base. We imagine it as an acid. So rather than dealing with this molecule, instead of dealing with this R group, we just imagine it's a hydrogen. Because thermodynamically, it's the same thing. It's the same thing, forming the same kind of conjugate base. So it's the same thing. So rather than dealing with this complex molecule with this R group, we imagine it as an acid. And we know this acid has a pKa of 9, which tells us about the stability of, of this guy. So now we know quanti we've quantified the stability of this guy. So what about this molecule forming this conjugate base? Well, again, I know it's a little tricky looking at this guy, but again, instead of dealing with this complex R group, we imagine it as an acid. So again, and the way I like to do it is look at the conjugate base and just imagine a hydrogen instead of this entire complex R group. So again, we don't know a lot of information about this molecule, but we do know a lot of information about this, this acid, which we can look in a textbook and see it has a pKa of 25, which tells us about the stability of this conjugate base. So now, rather than dealing with these complex molecules, dealing with these acids, we can quantify the stability of these conjugate bases. And we know the, the smaller the pKa, the stronger the acid. So this guy is, has a lower pKa, so it's a stronger acid. So it's a stronger acid, so therefore we know it creates a more stable conjugate base. This has a higher pKa, so it's a weaker acid. So it's a weaker acid because it creates an unstable conjugate base. So using these pKa's, we are able to quantify the stability of these conjugate bases. And we were able to see that this one is more stable. It's a stronger acid, creates a stronger, sta more stable conjugate base. So now we know this guy is more stable than this guy. So, so now we know the stability of these, these guys. So now we know this guy is more stable than this guy. So we know when this reaction reaches equilibrium, the vast majority of the molecules should be in the form of these products. But again, how do we quantify exactly how much? Simply put, this is how you do it. If you're doing a test and, and this is your question, your question and you have to quantify at equilibrium what, how many products relative to reactants, first thing you do is instead of this R group, you turn it into an acid. So instead of this R group, you turn it into an acid. Then you take the pKa of the acid on the left and subtract it by the pKa of the acid on the right. So, so it's literally that simple to find the pKa of the reaction. So we know this reaction would have a pKa of negative 16. But we know instead of dealing with the pKa's, we like to plug them into this equation to find the Ka of this reaction. So now we know the Ka of this reaction. So now we know this reaction has a Ka of 10 to the 16, which remember, this Ka tells us about this reaction at equilibrium. It tells us at equilibrium how many products relative to reactants. So again, if, we, if this reaction has a Ka of 10 to the 16, that tells us that at equilibrium, essentially, we have this ratio products to reactants. That's what this Ka tells us, the ratio products to reactants at equilibrium. So again, we let this reaction react, we let it reach equilibrium, we take those concentrations at equilibrium, plug them into this equation, and we would get this ratio, which essentially tells us at equilibrium, the vast majority of the molecules are in the form of the products relative to reactants. So now we know, now we've quantified exactly how many products there are relative to reactants at equilibrium. But again, simply put, if you're doing an exam, First step is you, you, instead of dealing with these complex compounds, you turn them into their analogous acids. Now you take the pKa of the acid on the left and subtract it by the pKa of the acid on the right. Now you have the pKa of the reaction. Use that to find out the Ka of the reaction. And once you determine the Ka of the reaction, you can simply remember what the Ka tells us. That the Ka essentially tells us the ratio of products relative to reactants at equilibrium. 